All right, so it's only been like five months since I bought this EK Quantum Delta Tech cooler. It's a cryo cooler that enables sub-ambient temperatures for Intel processors. And I'm an INTP. I have a lot of ideas. I start a lot of projects. I don't necessarily complete every single one of them in a timely manner. So yeah, I tend to have a lot of ideas and not on purpose, but I'll start a bunch of projects at once and then inevitably some of them fall on the back burner. This happened to be one of them. So this one was always in the back of my mind, but I was just kind of lazy to get around to it because I knew it involved a bunch of work getting this cooler installed. So I finally got around to doing it. And of course, it ended up that my controller unit was faulty out of the box. And since I didn't open the package for about six months, I was a little worried that I might not be covered by EK. So I reached out to EK customer support. I got a response within 24 hours. They asked me to send a video. I sent it over and within a few days, I had a new controller in my hand and everything's working perfectly. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Mattia, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, from EK Technical Support. Thank you so much for your assistance and making it an easy process to get my EK product working. That really instilled confidence in EK as a brand for me and I wouldn't hesitate to spend the extra money to get EK products going forward. It's not a secret that EK stuff is not cheap, it's pretty expensive, but to me, when I'm buying something, I'm not just buying the product up front, I'm buying the experience it comes with as well, and I'm also investing in the quality, you know, the brand reputation, the aesthetics. So while you can get more cost-effective parts for cooling systems, I think that the experience, the quality, the support, the aesthetics, everything about EK makes their higher price tag justified and you really get what you pay for. I feel covered with this product and I feel like if I have any issues getting it to work the way I want it to, I'll be covered. So I definitely wouldn't hesitate to buy EK products in the future going forward. I think they are an exceptional company. So I originally installed this loop without a drain valve and in order to install the new block, I unhooked my Bixky CPU cooler that I had installed and just disconnected it from the loop in the bucket. Before moving on, I inserted the fittings into the cryo cooling block. This thing is a brick, it's so heavy. Then next, I loosened up the fittings on the block and then I drained out enough excess coolant that it won't be dripping when I'm installing it. Then I got the fittings fastened to the cryo block. And because this block gets so cold, there's a possibility for condensation to occur both on the back plate and within the cooling mechanism. EK calls their solution to this a two-pronged approach. Basically, there's an insulation sticker you put on the back plate that I'm installing right here. And then within the cooler controller, there is a sensor that monitors the dew point and will not allow the cooler to get past that. Another thing that's specific to the cryo cooler setup, you need to use the EK ectotherm thermal interface material on the CPU instead of a traditional thermal paste. Check out the clearance on the RAM here with the cooler block. Might be a quarter of an inch of space there. So I've got my 13900K installed. I've got 32 gigs of 8000CL38 DDR5 SK Hynix ADI RAM installed. I've got my Samsung 990 Pro installed as well. These are all connected in the loop. And I'm putting this all on top of my open bench table BC1 V2 Titanium Color Edition. And it just looks so sick, so icy. Look at that beast config, man. <laughs> Jeez. 
And handling the graphics is going to be my MSI Ventus 3X 4090. This configuration is as close to maxed out as you can get on an Intel config, at least until tomorrow when the 14900K comes out. <laughs> All right, so the cryo cooling system is installed. Everything is working properly. It looks like my coolant is a little low here. Let's go ahead and fill that up. And here's the finished configuration. I've got the RAM, CPU, and M2 in the loop. My 4090 is not going to be water cooled by this loop. All of this is connected by a DisplayPort 1.48K capable cable to a Samsung Odyssey G7 1440 240 hertz for this run. There's another config I have up right now, 13600K 7900XTX on the Neo G8, the 4K 240 over there. For this run, I'm gonna be using the 1440, but I'll switch it over to 4K in a little bit. So I'm turning on cryo mode. Gonna see the temperatures drop from about the 40s to right about 20 degrees. I enabled the automatic overclock profile from Intel XTU for my initial test and I loaded up Cinebench 2024 and went ahead and ran the single core CPU benchmark. Notice the temperatures while under full load. Absolutely insane. <laughs> so it scored a 130 on the initial benchmark. I don't think that score is super impressive. I don't really run Cinebench much, so I'm sure there are ways to boost that score up, but I'm really looking more at the temps. I've never really delved into maxing out those benchmark scores. I've always really been more interested in actual performance in the games that I'm playing. So obviously I was interested to see how Tarkov performs here. What I did was kick up all cores to 5.9 gigahertz. I was having some stability issues at six, but as you can see here, all P cores at 5.9, pretty much staying at 40 degrees or under, a lot of times dipping under, as you can see. The gameplay felt very steady, just so smooth, and the temperatures on the components is just insane. 30 degrees on the RAM, 30 degrees on the M2 in the 30s for 13900K running 5.9 gigahertz all P core. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So I know I got to it pretty late, but I hope this was helpful for you and stay tuned tomorrow cuz I'm going to have a 14900K and I'll continue utilizing the system on the next gen. So I hope to see you tomorrow when I unbox and test the 14900K. So this is where I'm gonna drop off and let the footage roll. As always, thank you so much for viewing, liking, commenting on my content. It really means the world to me and gives me encouragement to keep grinding. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next one.